Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to properly set up your RC glider. So setup for your glider is really important because you know with gliding the goal is to stay in the air as long as possible and if your glider isn't set up properly then you are going to be losing a lot of flight time. So in this video I will be going through all the different mixes, presets, and whatnot to make sure that your glider can fly as well as it is able to. So some notes before we begin, I'm going to be showing all my setup on my discus launch glider, but you can apply what I'm saying to different types of gliders as well. It doesn't have to be a discus launch glider. And I'm not going to be showing the actual programming steps in the radio, I'm just going to show you what you need to make your airplane do. So with all those things out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay, so before you set up all of these things I'm about to go over, you wanna set your CG and make sure you like it because if you change your CG after you set up all these things, it's likely that your settings won't be optimized for that new CG. So the first thing we're gonna set up is called differential and on a normal plane, differential is when the ailerons will travel further up than they go down, and that reduces some of the weird coupling movements that uh, happen when the ailerons travel the same amount. However, for gliders, we're actually going to make it so the ailerons go further down than they go up, and that will actually increase the amount of lift because we basically want the flaperons to be going down as much of the time as possible because when they're going down, they create more lift. So I have 40% differential programmed into my radio. So that means the flap rounds will go down more than they go up. And you don't want to add too much because uh, once again, this will actually accentuate the weird coupling tendencies um, compared to getting rid of them because we're doing it in the opposite direction as you normally would. So, you know, dial some in, but not too much. If it flies weird after you dial it in, then you might have dialed in too much. You might want to uh, take some out. So that's the first thing. The next thing is snap flap. So this actually is the wing helping the elevator do its job. So normally the elevator will go like this, push the tail down, and then the entire plane will pitch up. But what we're gonna do is have the wing assist this motion by actually having the flap rons move down a little bit in conjunction with the elevator pushing the tail down so that the wing is pushed up and the tail is pushed down, making the plane make the same movement but with more responsiveness. So you can see about how much I have the flap rons move. It's pretty significant. And you also want to have this happen in the other direction, but it's way less. You might not even be able to see it because once again, we're trying to maximize the lift of the wing. So we don't want those flap rounds going up too much when we're pitching down. So that's the second thing. Now we can talk about all of the different modes. So some people call these presets, some people call them flight modes, interchangeable. So I have four modes. Currently, I have my launch mode, I have speed mode, cruise mode, and a float and thermal mode. Now, some people will break up that float and thermal mode into two modes, and they'll have five modes, but I just keep it a little bit simpler by only having a single mode for float and thermal. So I'll start off with the launch mode. So this is my launch mode. What it has is the flap runs go down a tiny bit, and the elevator uh, goes up so that the plane rotates up, pitches up to vertical right after I release the plane. And I also have a little bit of right rudder dialed in to arrest the rotation of the plane because it is a discus launch glider. So it stops it from spinning and it pitches the plane up really fast, which, at which point I flip into speed mode for the second part of the launch. So there's actually two parts of the launch mode, but the second part is the speed mode. This is speed mode. So launch mode, speed mode, launch mode, speed mode. Not much changes, but the elevator goes back to neutral and then the flaperons 
go up a little bit. And speed mode is designed for minimum drag. So that after, you know, I rotate into my launch and the plane's going straight up, flip into speed mode, it's minimum drag so I can get the most height possible. And you can also use speed mode just to get somewhere really fast. So say you're, you know, really far away and you got to get back to yourself and there's a strong headwind. So maybe you'd flip it into speed mode, pitch down, get a lot of speed going to try to get back to you. But honestly, you don't use speed mode very much in normal glider flying because it's not very efficient. It just has low drag, but doesn't have very low sink rate or high lift. So I really only use it for the second part of my launch. The next mode is cruise mode. So going from speed mode to cruise mode, the, aler the flaperons go back down a little bit. And cruise mode is designed to have the greatest range. So you want to be able to travel the maximum horizontal di distance per how much you're dropping vertically. So you want to be able to fly as far as possible. So, you know, normally if you're trying to, you know, go from thermal to thermal or come back to, you'd be in cruise mode, not speed mode. Speed mode's kind of a last resort, honestly, uh, or you use it for your launch. So cruise mode, to set it up, you kind of just have to play with your flapper on settings and see what gives you the most distance covered. Your manufacturer of your airplane may give you, you know, some initial settings you can go off of, but sometimes they don't and you just have to guess uh, until you get the right setting. So that's cruise mode. The final mode I have set up is my thermal and float mode, which are the same for me. And going from cruise to the thermal mode, you can see that the flap runs drop a lot. So this is cruise mode, that's thermal mode. The reason why they drop so much is we're trying to get minimum sink. So we want the plane to descend as slowly as possible. We don't really care about how far it goes, but we just want it to stay in the air as long as possible. And this also slows down the plane a little bit, so it's easier to circle in thermals. Like I said, some people will have a dedicated thermal mode, which has even more down flapperons, so that the plane slows down even more for really tight circles, but I don't bother with that. So with this, once again, you kind of just have to go out in dead air and then, you know, see how long you can stay aloft, you know, mess with the settings, do it again until you've think you found what makes your plane stay in the air the longest. So that's pretty much it for all of the modes. The one final thing you wanna set up is flaps. So uh, ideally the flaps will go 90 degrees to the wing. So you can see I'm pretty close to that, but not completely, but it's fine. It works on a normal airplane. Sometimes flaps are used to actually create lift like on takeoff, but for gliders, you're just trying to create the most drag you can um, because with creating lift, that's why we have all those different flight modes. Flaps are really only for creating drag and landing or getting down from you know, really high up in the air after you've been in a thermal. Just get it as far as you can get your servos and your flapperons to go and that'll be good enough. So that's pretty much it. I'll go through all my different flight modes one more time. So this is launch. This is speed or the second part of my launch. And then we have cruise and float. And that's it. Okay, that's it for this one. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Let me know down in the comment section below what you wanna see on this channel in the future. And please like this video if you liked it and get subscribed to see more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching.